streaming live. We're going live in five, four, three, two, one. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Sunshine Show, where I talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. Tonight, I am interviewing the one and only most amazing and fabulous Austin born and raised vocalist, MC, songwriter, Shorty motherfucking C in the house. What is up, Shorty? What up, what up? How you feeling? How you feeling? What's going on with you? I'm feeling pretty good. All right. You know it's snowing in Austin right now, right? I saw that. Like my note, my news feed is filled with people playing in the snow in <laughs> Texas. And, and I have to say I'm pretty jealous about it. Well, you know, you should be down here. This is true. This is true. What is up, Jacob? What is up, Lenny? What is up, Charlie? Thank you all for joining us tonight. We have the fabulous Shorty motherfucking C. I have known this hat for what, over 20 years now, Shorty? Almost 20 years. I would say, shoot, what was it, like 20, uh, 2004, 2005? I think so. That's when we played our first show together at the famous right. Dr. Rockets Blues Bar in Corpus Christi, Texas. Already. With monkeys uh, doing it. Monkeys doing it, monkeys doing it, monkeys <laughs> doing it. What? That is right. That is right. So for those that may not know who you are, Shorty C, could you give us a brief rundown, rewind, for those who may not know who you are, could you please give them a brief history and background of the famous, world famous Shorty C? Well, my proper name is Shorty C to the third power of the fourth quadrilateral square to the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, marinade, name, mesmerizing all different families of the races, races, uh, if you got that, show for show. Um, I'm from Austin, Texas. My real name, Christopher John Edwards, aka CJ Edwards. Born in Ray, well, born in Indianapolis, but came here as fast as I could. Like, um, and I lived in South Austin for my whole life, basically. And now I'm here on the east side, just hanging out. Uh, been a musician as far as back as I can remember. I've been singing for people. My dad, uh, put me up in front of people at church, um, at the congregation. I started leading songs there. And from there, you know, I just kept my love going into the place where I am right now, you know, it's marinating. Marinating. And I, and they, they call me a rapper sometimes. So. <laughs> All right, I'm getting some heat because apparently we're going live during the Steeler playoff game. I had no idea, uh, folks. Do I look like somebody that watches football? I stopped watching football probably about, when was that for? Four years ago, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick got me stopping and watch football. And I just happened, you know, my boycott's still going on. So um, I didn't know when to stop. <clears throat> hey, uh, we got Mama Cantu in the house. What's going on, Mama Cantu? We love what up, Mama. We got some real good memories with Mama Cantu. I'll tell you what. Yo, Victoria, Victoria, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> What's up, Margie? Thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. So uh, when I first met this lovely man here to my uh, right, left, up, down, I'm not sure. Uh, he has long, beautiful dreads and was dancing like James Brown and kind of singing <laughs> like James Brown too. Could you give us, uh, what, what are your influences, Shorty? Oh man, my influences, uh, my mother, my dad, uh, my brother, they're all my main influences because uh, you know, it's my environment. <laughs> But musically, my main influence, I would say, would be Stevie Wonder, uh, Michael Jackson, Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, uh, Otis Redding, uh, <clears throat> Take Six, um, a group called Straight Company, uh, Jimmy Page, Peace out to Jimmy Page, uh, Jimmy Cliff, um, Isaac Hayes. I don't know, the list goes on and on and on. I am influenced by sunshine. I'm influenced by water. <laughs> I'm influenced by everything that, you know, affects, affects me. And uh, as Sun Ra would say, I, I, I'm influenced by just the beauty of life. 
That's beautiful, Shorty. And that's why I love you so much. And you are one of my best friends in the whole entire world. We have been through the thick and the thin, and we are still rocking and rolling after all these years. Already, already. Uh, and I can't can believe I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, me either. It takes a special person to be friends with me for so many years, right? Woo! Hey, man, we don't judge over here. It takes a very special person to be a friend with me because yeah, I'm going to get on your nerves at some point. For real, for real. What is up, Don, in the house? Cool. Shorty, so I wanted to talk a little bit about being an Austin musician and kind of how that in affects and impacts you on a daily basis. Because I used to live in Austin over 10 years ago, and even then I felt like the market was super oversaturate, oversaturated. Right. And I feel like you guys still have an influx of people moving into Austin, obviously, because everybody wants to be there, music capital of the world. How does that yeah. affect you as a as a born raised i'm gonna say born because you may as well have just been born there um awesome musician how does it affect me being an awesome musician i'm, I'm not i don't quite get this question yeah like the yeah. the influx of of musicians that are going into austin um is kind of oversaturating the market do you feel right. like that affects you at all yeah it does there's pros and cons to everything the big pro to that is that you get a great influx of talent you know what I'm saying? Um, you get a whole different, uh, a whole bunch of perspective culturally and 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 uh, sonically. Um, you get a lot of different uh, uh, different uh, understandings of how to approach music. Period. Uh, the cons would be, like you said, it's oversaturated, and therefore everybody's you know crabbing a bucket trying to get the gig. Blah blah blah. Um, but competitiveness is also a cool thing sometimes, you know, in the capitalist society. But, uh, man, I really don't try to look at the, the bad stuff about it, man. It's hard to get paid here in Austin, but, you know, you know what it is. You got to play in that wedding band and do that type of shit, you know. But, uh, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't I don't see too much, too much wrong with it. Only thing that I see wrong with it is when bands do not or musicians do not uh, try to get their worth for going out to play. Um, uh, as in uh, they, they undercut everybody. And then that's when things get, you know, pretty sour because we are out here, we're working, we've been doing our craft for our whole lives, most of us. And, and when you get cut under the knees, you know what I'm saying? That really sucks. Um, uh, and it happens all the time. And I, that's, that's the, the disappointing part. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Um, and I love that you that you are so positive about the situation. Uh, although I don't see you ever leaving Austin, so you have to be positive about the situation. <laughs> you don't ever see me leaving Austin. Well, I just feel like you're a staple of Austin society. Can you tell us what day is Christopher Edwards' day in Austin, Texas? <laughs> September the nineteenth, uh, two thousand nineteen, or nine nineteen nineteen was the day I was awarded the. Uh, I don't know, CJ Edwards Day by Mayor Steve Adler. Wow. I don't, thank you. I don't know why they gave it to me. Oh, please. You're too humble. I know why they gave it to you because you are a badass musician um, and you're on top of your shit. You're on top of your game and you're constantly hustling. And that's what I love about you. Um, and congratulations, Shorty. Not everybody gets their own day. And I mean, that's fabulous, fucking amazing. You deserve it. You should rock thank you. it. Thank um, you. Tell us about the bands that you've been in over the years. Well, the first band, I would say group I was in was a hip hop group called South Side Side. Uh, we were a couple of cats out of South Austin, uh, neighborhood 78745. Um, me, my, my, one of my best friends, Rodney Rooks, uh, my cousin, Ken Chandler, guy by the name of Blacksmith, Rashad, AKA Blacksmith. Uh, What's up, Rashad? <laughs> Uh, and we uh, and a guy named Will C. And we uh, formed a group called South Side Side. Um, our first gig was Pecan Street Festival on Sixth Street. Uh, and a strange story about that was we had a woman that who started her who broke her water while we were on stage. <laughs> she went into labor, and uh, yeah, we had some very dirty uh, panties that were thrown on stage that day. But uh, <laughs> So that was my first, like, you know, gig out. Um, and then after that, um, 
I started doing poetry readings uh, and uh, I was at this place called The Hideout. So I'm going to make a long story short. I was at this place called The Hideout. Oh no, you have all the time in the world. Okay, I just, I don't want to go all the way into it, but <laughs> there was a young lady named Bevan Kara Shaw. And when I would go to these uh, poetry readings, I would not say anything. I would sit there, I was at work. Uh, I was like on break from work at uh, this place called Icon Office Solutions. And so sometimes I'd fall asleep on the couch while I'm, you know, just sitting there listening. And one day I, I kind of fell asleep and she called me out. She's like, you got to get up on the stage and you got to do something. And I got up there and I just started rocking the spot. And she just, she was impressed and she had me feature there. So I started coming every week. And uh, there I met this guy named Eric Teixeira who played acoustic guitar. Um, and we both like really meshed together. And we formed a group called Diasporic. Um, oh, true Diasporic fan in the house. <laughs> Word, word. Uh, we got the name from a Saul Williams poem called Co-Dead Language. Uh, the, the, the poem goes, uh, whereas breakbeats have been the missing link connecting the diasporic communities to its drone moving past. Um, that's where the name comes from. We were riding all the way down to Kerrville for the Kerrville Folk Festival, and we we're going to sell CDs that we had just made, but we didn't know what we were going to call ourselves. And we came up with that at that point. Uh, we sold out of our CDs, got back in the truck. I went to my job and said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool, I'm out, and went out on tour. Uh, from there, I came back, and I, I met a cat by the name of Rudolph Eccles. Rudy bro! Yeah, man, that's my boy. And uh, things changed sonically very quickly once Rudy uh, jumped aboard. He had a band called Stimulus Response. We battled at this... Uh, place called uh what, what is now called the mohawk it was called the caucus club back then we uh had a little battle between me and rudy and this guy named orion garcia if anybody knows peligrosa which is dj orion he's the guy that put that together um after we had our little battle rudy was like man you're dope you're pretty dope man why don't you be part of stimulus response i was like well i need a bass player in my new my band called ds4 he's like hell yeah and the stimulus response didn't do much after that and he became part of uh diasporic and uh, we met this guy named Jimmy Dreams and this other guy named Darren Lang at a party on November the 19th, 2004. <laughs> and from there sprouted the band Diasport, that I would call. And uh, the rest was history after that. And the next band was called Finest Kind. These are all just projects coming out of Diasport. The Deep Madness Project, uh, Thermostat, uh, sauce, uh, top choice, the metal stuff, Norte, picklefish. <laughs> uh, man, uh, what's another band? Oh, butter and jam, vibe sessions, uh, baby powder for the backside. <laughs> uh, <laughs> baby, baby powder for your backside. Baby powder for your backside. <sighs> Wow, the list just keeps going on and on. I want to say hi to a few people that are joining us. Mom, Dad, we have Don, we have Jeff, what is up? Uh, Shaner's in the house. Charlie, thank you guys all for hanging out with us. I want you guys to drop your best memories with Shorty in the comments. Um, do that for us. Best comment, uh, best memory wins a free happy birthday wrap from Shorty on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Go shout it. It's your birthday. We go to party like it's your birthday. birthday. You know. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, some of my best memories with you are from the diasporic shows. And one of the more recent memories was I guess about five or six years ago, you guys actually had a diasporic reunion in Austin at Hole in the Wall, I believe. Yeah. And I flew yeah. down specifically just to go see you guys at the reunion. Right. It was just fucking balls of the wall. Amazing. Um, I was just what, talking about that. What was it like right. trying to put that together with such a random sporadic crowd of cats that are just all over the, all over the place? What was it like putting that together? Yeah. Uh, I don't really remember how it came about. I think I was hanging out with Rye Dog and uh, we were listening to uh, our last uh, recording, which was called Mass Appeal. And we were like, man, 
let's put the band back together, man. <laughs> uh, we were in the midst of like a finest kind rehearsal or something like that. And so I hit up Rudy and Rudy was like, hell yeah. And then I hit up D and D was like, hell yeah. From there, we just like, okay, if those two guys are on, then we're gonna go ahead and put this thing together. And Hole in the Wall, because Hole in the Wall was the spot that we played at more than almost any other venue in Austin. Uh, we, we had a residency there at one point every Sunday. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, we just had fun there, you know what I'm saying? That was one of the spots that, you know, original Austin style, you know what I mean? Like a straight up actual Austin. And we are a, a Austin band, so we figured that we needed to be in an Austin type of place, you know? And uh, it was it was a true diasporic kind of show, if you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, all was, I remember was there was a fight at the end of the night, and that's how you know you're oh at my a God. diasporic yeah. show. You're at a diasporic show, and you know a fight happens at the end of the night. That's what's up. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, the, the the fight spurred between, I think, Blacksmith and a young lady who passed away last year almost at this exact same time. Her name is Sarah Mack. Uh, she was a bartender at um, Dozen Street as she was the bar manager over at uh, Hole in the Wall. And uh, she passed away last year, right around this time. It's funny you bring that story up. May she rest in peace. No doubt, no doubt. Black Smith, you don't give a fuck. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> nope. I'm a king. <laughs> What's up, Bouchard? I love you, brother. Hey, King W in the house. What's going on? Jacob the Boost in the house. What is what up, Dub Dub? Cool. If you guys are just joining us, we have the one and only Shorty C in the house. Uh, we got a little Q&A. If you guys have any questions for Shorty, drop them in the comments. What's up, Troy? Um, so Shorty, tell me a little bit about your James Brown dance moves. How did you acquire such fantastic moves? A lot of uh, days in the kitchen with a broom in front of me and socks and just slide my feet trying to figure out how they do, how he does that. It's not just necessarily him, it's him and Jackie Wilson. A lot of people don't give Jackie Wilson a lot of the uh, uh, respect, but if you ever go look up some any YouTube videos, go look up Jackie Wilson's dance moves. Like, he's amazing. Jackie Wilson, uh, Billy Preston, he used to do the mashed potato like crazy. Um, uh, what do they call it? The, the the chicken flex, all that kind of shit, man. Uh, the all chicken, those old school the chicken flex, show us the chicken flex. Nah, I, I'm too old for that, man. Uh-uh. I'm too old for that. I don't have the right kind of floor. I don't have the right shoes. Look, I got boots on. Oh, shorty. I can't. Nah, I'm an old man. Sunshine. Sunshine, I swear I'm an old man. I can't do none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're such a good dancer. That was one of the things that attracted to me, attracted me to you from the get-go was just your moves on stage. It was so crazy. Um, we have somebody asking us about our Zodiac. What, uh, I'm a Gemini in case you didn't know, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> Which sign are you, uh, Shorty? Leo is what they, that's what they say. Oh, you're I a don't Leo. Know. Yeah, I'm a Leo, August 6th. Born oh. of the day when, when Jamaica got its independence. And also the day they, they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. So, you know, take that how you want. Very fitting, very fitting. <laughs> we have Rob in the house. Rob Panay. What is up, Rob? What up, Rob? Uh, we got Charlie Pace, Eric Gomez. Everybody, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate all of you for your time. We are having an entertaining Sunday. Um, it's good times, nothing but good times. Could you uh, tell me about your songwriting process, Shorty? My songwriting process? I don't have a songwriting process. Okay. I like today. I, I wrote a song today, and I started. I just picked out a patch. I'm I'm working over here on GarageBand, or I work on Ableton, and uh, I just try to think of a picture in my mind sometimes. And what I saw today was like tall trees, thin bamboo. And so I was like, oh, I feel like I'm in ancient China or something like that. So I, I try to find a sound to patch that, that sort of match that. And then I sometimes I just let my hand just go and feel something and then boom. But sometimes it might be the rhythm that hits me first. Uh, I wrote a song with the finest kind called, uh, This is the Life. 
And I wrote it on a bus stop bench uh, with my head laid up to the sky. I was looking up and I just heard this one beat. And luckily I have badass drummers that you know hang around me. And this guy, Ed Miles, he knew exactly how I was feeling. And from that, a uh, uh, brother named Rolf Ardall just found the keys, found the melody real quick. And you know, I, I'm more of a collaborative writer, but you know, due to our situation right now, I've been having to force, been forced to, you know, having to write on my own. And uh, so it, it's a hard, it's, I don't have a fucking formula, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I might come up with something in my head, like motherfucker, like, you know, uh, some stupid shit, like uh, my girlfriend says, booty dancing on the Ojo, you know? <laughs> uh, now, we just come up with stupid shit and be funny and, and then something might come out of that, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's all kinds of different, different ways to come up with shit, you know, just, you gotta be open to it, you know what I mean? Be open to whatever the universe has available for you at the moment, you know? Um, how about that a T I a T T Y a T I a T T Y it's a titty party. It's a titty party. Hey, 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 a T I a T T Y every year, every year, every year. Hey. Uh, so that stems from a tour we did together uh, when we were in Picklefish. Very special and tour. A very, a very special, special tour brought to you by me, the one and only. Uh, I hired Shorty to help me out on the road and he ended up playing uh, what auxiliary and doing like backup vocals. And mm -hmm. it was it was a wild ass time. And I think we had docked in Colorado, maybe in Aspen, or we had played that coffee shop. Oh, uh, that was in Colorado Springs, yeah. Oh, Colorado Springs. And uh, so we played a coffee shop, they had an open mic, and it just turned into a tea party. Oh, no, no my bad, my bad. That was uh, uh, Vail, 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 Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. Uh, that shit was that? live as hell. <laughs> We got Andy McDonald oh, and Rich in the house. Uh, yeah, that was wild. I'm going to make a shirt that actually says Titty Party. All right, all right. Um, what, about what, the, what about our friend that we had to hit up uh, with the canned soup? I'm going to make you love <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, my God, Shorty. You got to post that video sometime. I haven't. I don't think I've seen that shit since. Oh, oh my you, God. Should, you sent it to me one time. So I have, so it's good and explicit. If you guys have kids, put them to bed at this point. Uh, so we were on tour and I had this like creeper stalker chick that was sending me like really weird messages on Facebook and Shorty got upset and he's like, you know, nah, you ain't gonna let her do you like that, nah, girl. And he gets a fucking box of like, what was it, broth, chicken broth. And I remember we were in Taos, New Mexico and, um, Shorty records a video and he's like gets the the chicken broth and what'd you say? First I'm gonna clean out your asshole. <laughs> Cause I know I had I have I had a bottle of Clorox. <laughs> and so I pulled up the Clorox and said, first we're gonna clean out your asshole. And then we're gonna make some soup. <laughs> you, I'm gonna make you love me. <laughs> Oh my God, it was so epic. And uh, so that was Shorty's response to the weird stalker. And guess what? She totally stopped sending me uh, videos and messages after that. So it worked. So I need to start a business. You you have a stalker, you hit me up. I'll make a video. It'll stop fucking with you, you know. <laughs> That'll Come. be your side hustle. <laughs> All right. What up, Danielle in the house? Um, So <laughs> you guys, I just dropped a merch line called Base Kids. And uh, I made a shirt, especially for tonight, for the Diaspora crew. And it says, Edwards, Dreams, Ride Dog, and Madness. If you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna put it in the comments. 21 bucks, limited time only. Support what? this mofo right here. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I want to talk about uh, Deep Madness and what it's like working with the one and only. Oh, man, it's a dream, man. It, oh, man, I, it's a blessing. It's a gift. Um, I have been able to, in the last 15 years now, 15 years, wow, 
to be able to sit by the side and and share the stage with probably the most amazing musician uh this side of the universe you know what i mean like d manis is beyond phenomenal he's 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 uh he's a, a super natural phenomenon you know what i mean like his style of playing his um his attention his attention to detail uh his timing his his uh his way he, the way he shares his music like he's not stingy with music he, and and he it doesn't matter whether you're a novice or you're an expert he always has space for everybody to come and join him and that's what's so beautiful about d you know what i'm saying he doesn't have um a lot of people are, are sort of intimidated by him but if you you know can shed your little fear you'll find that d is like one of the most open people to hang out with and laugh with and joke with and, and most assuredly to play with you know what i'm saying so yeah just the fact that he he allowed me to come in his sphere and 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 join in and get to rock with him and tour with him and do all kinds of record with him you know it's been a blessing you know i can't i can't i cannot cannot be more thankful in my life than meeting a guy like d madden you know what I mean? absolutely and d madness for those of you that may not know is a famous uh i mean he fucking does everything i have a track that i haven't released yet where he literally played the drums the bass the guitar he beatboxed he played three-part violin on this motherfucker mm -hmm. he is a fucking amazing musician he is blind was he born blind yes he was born blind Born blind, and this motherfucker, if you go to his house, he shuts the lights lights off and he's like, ah ha ha, motherfuckers, <laughs> see how it feels now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't forget if you showed up on an ounce, Sunshine, what happened? Yeah, so one time I went to pick his ass up to go to the studio and uh, knock on the door and this motherfucker opens up the door butt ass naked and I swear to God, <laughs> I went running away from that door like never again. I will never fucking do that again. I learned my lesson. You always you gotta call. call. Always got a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for some reason, I feel like he knew you were coming. I don't know. <laughs> All planned out for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Uh, so let's talk about uh, what everything's been like during this whole fucking pandemic for you as a musician and just life in general. Well, you know, when it, it's funny. I've been having like a roller coaster, right? So when i first started when the pandemic first hit we did our last butter and jam show at this place called electric church on march the 15th i did a wedding that weekend before and then after that i didn't do another show until another show in front of an audience until august the 25th wow. and i and it's it's all been weddings i have been trying to i've been asked to to play at clubs and stuff like that but my uh my own what do you call it i don't i don't want to bring anybody out and them get sick under my name you know what i'm saying put it that way so i haven't accepted any any gigs except one gig we did a gig a couple of weeks ago with jimmy dreams me jimmy dreams d we did a gig at this place called sam's point and that was badass but other than that i haven't really been trying to do club gigs the weddings man i can't really pass that up man that's money i still you know gotta eat yeah. so that's been that's been happening um but other than that um it's it's been great for me creatively because i like i said before i'm a collaborative type of writer and it's forced me to like work on my own stuff on my own yeah and i'm practicing like day in day out day in day out on on keyboard you know what i mean and my skill level has gone up substantially um so i'm really happy about that I, i've gotten a lot uh, a lot of recordings done not vocally like i said i haven't been working on my vocals that much but uh i've definitely been killing it uh when it comes to beat production and uh hopefully soon there'll be a project out i got like a mixtape coming out uh, based on conan the barbarian the movie oh, the soundtrack <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do that. And that's going to be totally instrumental. Um, and then I just got a lot of stuff, you know, on deck for like about three albums right now. So 
Wow, that's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. That's badass. So, you know, although there's a lot of negatives, there's also a lot of positives too, because you've been able to like refine your skill set and work on all this amazing music. No doubt, no doubt. Um, but I miss, I miss being on stage, man. I think I really figured out, I was gonna quit doing music, square business. I was gonna quit doing music back in- uh, No! Yeah, back in June, I was like, I'm done. And uh, I don't know if you know Reggie Kobe. Reggie Kobe is Reggie. really- What's yeah, up, he, Reggie? <laughs> he really like got me like to to reevaluate what I was the path I was going down, and so I, I switched it up and uh, just locked myself in the room and started playing, started working on stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but a, a lot of a lot of good friends have been there for me. I've been having a difficult time, you know, mentally, and uh, but things are coming around, and I'm just trying to trying to keep on moving forward and music is the thing that's pushing me too um it's it's fair to say that music can be medicine a lot of times no doubt no doubt sure uh danielle says a master has failed more times than a rookie has ever tried word no doubt no doubt absolutely 100 percent um let's talk about your favorite memory with me mr shorty c i know you have many but let's just talk about your favorites <sighs> my Favorite memory is the end of the Picklefish tour, and I was going to fly home. And what was the city we went into? San Jose. San Jose. We go into San Jose, and Miss Sunshine says, "Oh, well, we're gonna stay overnight because you know your flights in the morning. We make sure we get you there on time. We'll just hang out, blah blah blah." And your son Lucas is with us, and we get to a hotel room. And uh, Sunshine goes inside to the bathroom to wash up or whatever. And she goes, hey, Shorty, can you reach in uh, my purse and grab that envelope out there? And I grab the envelope. She goes, open up the envelope. I open it up and it's two tickets to see Kevin Hart, <laughs> which I had been listening to all summer that year. And uh, yeah, that was, that was fucking amazing i it really was, appreciate that yeah it was, so, that was so amazing and like i got it all on video because see um rewind a little bit the tour we started off in texas in austin texas and that's where i was able to like pick up shorty and mm -hmm. we did a fucking epic tour we went through fucking i mean let's talk okay wait wait Okay, wait, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, so we took Lucas on tour with us and he was like our merch man the whole time. And at the time, I guess Lucas was like 16 or something 16, like yeah. that. And, he was uh, a junior in high school? Well, he yeah. just finished his junior year. Yeah, and right. uh, so yeah, and so I got these tickets and I was like, oh my God, I got a surprise shorty. And I got it all on fucking video and it was so epic and the show was amazing. And uh, all right, all right, all right, you gonna learn I'll, today. You gonna learn today. <laughs> That's what I was saying all summer. <laughs> you all are how long dick look like today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we had such a good time. But um, so when we first started the Picklefish tour, we were basically going to take two different vehicles. And the first show that we did was at Dozen Street in Austin, Texas. And we pull up and there's a fucking van for sale um, right outside the, the place. And I'm like, oh my God, I need this fucking van. And right. basically, it was your friend, right, that owned the vehicle? Yeah, it was Mady DeStefano, uh, the owner of the actual bar. Yeah, Mady. Yeah, she owned that van, yeah. And so we fucking bought that van, and we that's where we started tour. But the first night, I lost the keys. And so do you remember the locksmith had to come and, like, make us a new set of keys or some shit? And I don't, don't think I was around. I yes, wasn't there. You were. You're in the picture. It was me, you, and Lucas. And remember, we had to drive all night to get to our oh. first gig, which and was we had the air. We had the Airbnb over at um off Riverside. That's what it was. Yes, I, yes. I remember now. Okay. It was a hectic start, but we drove. <laughs> and uh, you played Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe on audiobook the whole time. That got us through because we had to drive all night just to get to our gig the next day. It was Hell really yeah. epic. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adam. That's a great book to listen to on audiobook uh, if you ever need to kill some time. <laughs> I tried to do that with my with my family on vacation. They weren't having it. They were cussing me out. <laughs> so thank you for being patient with, you know, my my uh my listening habits when it comes to audiobooks and shit. No, I think it was great because actually Lucas after that, I think he learned a lot about like acting and like um 
how to speak during, and then he started doing the uh, UIL, the one act play, and he'd always like place. Really? Like, place, yeah. And like, I saw huh. that, cause you know, they have to be very expressive. So thank you for that, Shorty. I appreciate no that. No doubt. Already, already. I did not know that. That's what's up. And then, How is Lucas doing, by the way? He is so good. So he's been staying here with me um, mm -hmm. for the past year since all this like pandemic shit started. And I'm about to take him back to LA. Um, actually on Wednesday, he's moving back to LA and he graduates wow. actually in June. He'll be done with college, which kind of- wow. my mind. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel a lot older. How do you think I feel? <laughs> um, so yeah, he's about to fucking graduate college and be a fucking badass, uh, famous fucking artist. And I couldn't be more stoked about it. Uh, sure. Do you remember when we went to the Winchester Mystery House? In Man, I was just, once again, I was just talking about that yesterday. Like uh, the Mystery House about the lady that has all the different rooms that go to nowhere. Yeah. It's like the most, most haunted house in America or some shit like that. Yeah. Man, yeah. That was sure, epic. Sure. So much fun. Um, yeah, we had a lot of great memories from that pickle fish tour. Uh, yeah, so yeah. many good memories. It was fucking insane. Um, yeah, man, good times. So I have a question for you that I ask a lot of people. What's if uh, you could pick five people that mm -hmm. are alive to have a dinner party with, who would those five people be and what would you serve? Man, that's a good question. All right. Well, uh, I pick Genghis Khan. One. Do I have to name the reason why? Sure. The reason why I picked Genghis Khan is because now I might be wrong about this, but I heard this before. Uh, Genghis Khan has the most descendants than any other person in the world. Like he has more descendants than anybody else in the world, from Africa to China, evidently uh, Mongolia. That is uh, to Europe to mid to the Middle East. He has the most descendants. That means he was probably one of the most wealthy men at, at one point, which means he probably knew. All right, I don't want to get to that. All right, but anyway, so. <laughs> but yeah, Genghis Khan. Um, Jesus. Okay. Just because he's the most talked about person and. Uh, and. Uh, I wonder how it felt to, from one moment being unknown to the next moment being the savior of a people. You know what I'm saying? And, and like taking on that role, and then being uh, being being loved so much, and then all of a sudden being turned on and crucified. That's that's kind of weird. And he has the story that probably more people know in the world than anybody else. Um, uh, then, Sade, just because she's hot. <laughs> wait, wait, so we got Genghis Khan, <laughs> we got Jesus Christ because of his follower or his status, and then we got Sade because she's fine as hell. She's fine as hell, and she can sing, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is she gonna be your entertainment at this party? No, she will not be my my entertain. See, you didn't talk about entertainment. You said five people, right? So if I had entertainment for the party, <laughs> I'd have Mozart there with his crew. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a dinner party. That de -de 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 -de, you know, play some you know really hoity toity English from uh, around. But yes, Mozart would be the entertainment, so he wouldn't be part of the five. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Ali, just because he's the greatest. Uh. He just seems like a lot of fun. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Oh, I like it. And the reason why I say Marilyn because she was so fucking like, she was that symbol like, everybody wanted her or wanted to be like her and that also had to be a weird position to be in and when you're in positions like that you have odd perspectives about everything so i would like to know her perspective and just you know she's hot too anyway um 
and then I would say, <clears throat> Elijah Muhammad. Oh, okay. Elijah Muhammad, the, the guy that started the Nation of Islam. Okay. And the reason why I say him, because he took on a, on a radical way of approaching Black people in America and, and taking them out of the mental slavery that we uh, acquired during 400 years of slavery and started helping us feel not not um, taking away that inferiority complex that that black people have due to the fact of what we went through, and he was the first one to really, on a mass scale, attack that straight up. So yeah, Elijah Muhammad. Wow, that is an amazing list of people. So let's just go back over this list that you provided. For so <laughs> number right. one, we have Genghis Khan. Isn't number that? two, we have Jesus Christ. Okay. Number three, we have Sade, everybody. <laughs> um, number four, we have Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe. Number mm -hmm. five, we have Muhammad Ali. Oh, so I did six. And number six, we had Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad. And we have Mozart for the entertainment. What will you be serving your guests, Shorty? I would be serving, well, I can't serve pork. No, Oliver Edgar William Nelson Kenton, the first power, refuses for you to serve any pork. <laughs> no pork. <laughs> uh, salmon with asparagus, uh, garlic bread, some real, uh, some al dente angel. Angel uh, uh, spaghetti <laughs> pasta, um, red wine. Say what? White wine. I'm bad. My bad. We got pasta and salmon. White wine. Uh, <laughs> with uh, what do you call it? Uh, lemon meringue pie as dessert. Ooh, lemon meringue pie is my favorite. And a strange brew coffee for the dessert as well. Oh, fuck yeah, strange brew coffee, Austin, Texas. Don't talk about, you know, don't <laughs> <laughs> um, And then if you had one question you could ask any person on that dinner table, what is the question that you would ask? Why? 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 That's your question, why? Yeah, that's my question. Very open-ended, I like it, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, how do you ask, I'm gonna ask you, why? Why, you're at, what? Don't I'm asking you why. <laughs> don't confuse your host because <laughs> you're having a dinner party with all the most influential, influential people of your life. You wanna know, you wanna know something. What is the question that you ask these people? Why? <laughs> why why are we here um what do you feel your purpose is um what makes you feel the best what makes you feel the best every day i have this book here called the desire map she go look it up it's really cool and it talks about evidently desires and how to actually find your actual desires like what you really 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 desire and get to it and be able to create it and manifest that. Uh, so yeah, what's awesome. your greatest desire? Oh my gosh, Shorty, I love you. You are just always so deep with everything that you speak of. Um, all right, I got a question. You've been given an elephant, an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What do you do with said elephant? What do I do with the elephant that I can't give away or sell it? Hmm. Well, I feed it, number one. <laughs> uh i talk to it regardless if you can't talk back to me uh i'd uh sing to it i jump on top and try to you know like you know walk around with it uh i don't know we just hang out I, I probably couldn't keep it that long because i probably wouldn't have enough food for it 
Shorty, you have you would teach him how to sing and be a part of your your band and stuff. He could like, I'm, awesome I'm not a good I'm not a good teacher, and I doubt if I could teach humans how to sing, then I probably can't teach an elephant how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I've seen some really cool elephants that can like paint really crazy. So maybe you can like teach him how to paint caricatures and then he can paint caricatures at your shows. I can't paint myself. <laughs> so how am I gonna do that? You gotta paint. <laughs> All right. Charlie Pace. What? No giraffes. Do you mean no, comma giraffes or no giraffes? How do you feel about giraffes, Shorty C? <laughs> how do I feel about giraffes? Well, gir <laughs> these are odd questions. I think I think um giraffes. <laughs> they're they're uh they remind me of. Amazon women. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because they, they are. See, I ain't going over there. I'm gonna stop. We're, we're we're stopping. We are stopping right there. <laughs> uh, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We've been on here about 45 minutes. We're gonna take it for about another 15. If you guys have any questions for Shorty C, drop them in the comments. Shorty, do you have any advice for struggling musicians who are having a really hard time getting through um, this pandemic and just life as we know it today? What is the new normal? Nobody knows. Well, the new normal is be strange as possible and uh, have fun each day as best as you can. Uh, love as hard as you can. Uh, laugh as hard as you can. Work as hard as you can. Play as hard as you can. Um, be aware. Be aware of, of, of how you affect other people, how other people affect you. And try to be as honest as possible with yourself. Uh, and so this, all this advice also goes into music, but when you go music specifically, practice, 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 uh, and practice some more. And then after that, you want to practice again, and then practice again, and then practice. Music is like meditation, right? Music is a meditation. Uh, so have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously. But make it serious enough where you can try to make a living off of it if that's what you want to do with music. If you want it to be just a hobby, do that. Uh, uh, just have fun. Don't forget to have fun. Music is supposed to be... Uh, <laughs> music is suppo supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something you dance to. It's supposed to be something you make love to. It's supposed to be something you, you uh, hang out with your homies and play dominoes with. It's something you're supposed to... Uh, 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 remind you of a, a specific time in life. It's something that's supposed to keep you, uh, bring bring joy to you. Or, or if you feel sad, it, it deepens the sadness and it lets you, uh, allow you to explore whatever sadness that is or, or your anger, whatever it is. Every emotion can be expressed through music. So just have, be in the music, be the music and be true to the music and it'll be true to you. You know what I mean? No doubt. I feel like you just wrote me a poem. <laughs> was that a poem? I feel like it was, or I, I, yes, I love it. It was beautiful and deep and very spiritual. I'm gonna go back and I'm going to um, write it all down and we'll make a song out of it. No doubt, no uh, doubt. <laughs> Shorty C, what is the best way to um, support you right now? The best way to support me right now? Yeah. Well, the moment you see my, whatever it be, a single, an EP, uh, uh, album, merchandise, anytime you see any of that stuff come up, go ahead and buy it. Uh, that's the best way to support me. And also the other way, best way to support me is support the people, the people around me, uh, the people that I work with. When D Mattis comes out with stuff, I'll post it, support his project. Uh, Please give me give me your prayers and 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 your good your good feelings like hey, you know send me good energy I, I really appreciate that sometimes we gotta ask for it you know sometimes we feel all alone and a lot of times I feel alone but when like when you hit me up I remember like yo I got people in this world people that actually fucking love me and so I you know sometimes we get all in our head about shit and uh, so just that good energy sending that good juju. 
I appreciate that. So yeah, that helps, you know, um, and help yourself. When I know people that I, I love and, and people that maybe I don't know at all that's supporting me, when I know they're doing well for themselves, that makes me feel better, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, anyway. Awesome, simple things that don't even cost money, right? Word, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see here. Let's check out these comments. Uh, Jesus, what is up, Jesus? He says, open the damn gate and let the neighbors teach your, your giraffe or your elephant. <laughs> what? Uh, bro, elephants would play some drums and paint all day. You are right, Charlie. Charlie wants to know what your favorite instrument you've ever learned. Do you play instruments, Shorty? Yeah. Uh, so I think my favorite instrument is the timpani that I ever learned, that is. Um, I played symphony in uh, in junior high and high school during the concert season, and uh, I would play and close my eyes, and the conductor would always uh, my band my band teacher he would always get mad at me for closing my eyes and not watching them. But uh, I just had so much fun playing symphony. You're holding down like a bass line, but at the same time you're you're a percussive instrument. So uh, symphony, I love the sound of it. Uh, the uh, aggressiveness of it. it it makes people look around the corner like dang dong dang dong you know it's just one of those uh those those instruments that that you can't turn away from when you hear it you know what I mean? yeah um <laughs> before we wrap this up i wanted to talk about one of my favorite stories that you told me over some dinner i think one time uh and that was the probation officer of your school <laughs> hiding in the tree. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that because uh, <laughs> that was the first time I went to jail. <laughs> I was 17 years old. Uh, no, nah, that was old school. Uh, yeah, I showed up to school. Just to make a long story short, I showed up to school and I had some marijuana. And uh, the campus police officer was hiding in the tree. In the there, tree, like this yeah. is a dedicated officer, okay? He tracked her ass down and climbed into a tree and hid in the fucking tree and waited for you to sleep a goddamn joint in the park, okay? We we saw what they called, I went to this place called Crockett High School and we saw what they called Crockett Blunts. So in the morning we rolled up a whole bunch of blunts inside some Swisher Sweets, but leave some of the tobacco in. We sold them for $5, they called it Crockett Blunts. So when I show up to the park, Boom, boom, I'm selling these crocker buns. <laughs> and so everybody's seeing, well, the officer who's hidden up in the tree is looking at everybody walk up to me buying blunts or whatnot. So when I walk back into school, boom, I go to the office. And yeah, I'm 17, so I go to jail. So yeah, that's, that's that story. I know it's probably bittersweet for you, but when you told me, I could not stop fucking laughing. I thought it was the funniest shit I'd ever heard in my life like what the fuck and that was also the trip god damn we were like north cali and there we were at the spot where like there was the notorious mountain beaver and remember mm -hmm. like we paid lucas we we're like lucas if you can take a picture it was the elusive if you could take a picture of the elusive mountain beaver that's where you're like you you took the picture in the tub with the wines and the cheeses no yeah. doubt no doubt and Lucas, and then we went to our gig and Lucas ends up sending us a picture from like the internet of like the mountain beaver and one of his 200 bucks. <laughs> good times. Oh my God, good times. I love you so much, Shorty. Um, I've had the best time talking with you tonight. We've been on here about an hour. Everybody that's been hanging out with us, we've had a great fucking time. Eric, Don, Margie. Rob, Charlie, um, the, it just keeps going on and on. Thank you guys. Um, I dropped the link to the sh uh, to the diaspora the t -shirt. shirt. the t shirts. Uh, if you guys uh, go and purchase those, that money will go back into Shorty's pocket. And uh, the guys, it's a limited limited edition, twenty one bucks for a limited time. Um, and then I will also drop the links. Do you have diaspora up on Facebook yet, or? No, I don't have any of the sports stuff up on Facebook. Uh, it's not something that I'm going to put up unless everybody agrees on it and they want to do that. Uh, but I actually am coming out with the album that has some of the diasporic original recordings on it. So nice. Uh, and that I'm talking about within the next five or six months. 
So what's the best way to check out your music and the projects that you've done? Oh, oh, I you have done so you have done some music with me also. If you guys go to Mo, if you uh Google Mofo Cheerios on YouTube, uh the motherfucker video pops up and Shorty is an exclusive on that song. Boom. Uh also come on home. Oh baby, please just come on home. There's that song. That's also on YouTube. Uh well, just uh, yeah, follow Butter and Jam Vibe Sessions on Instagram. Uh, follow CJ Edwards and the Funk Fellowship on Instagram, okay. um, and on and on Facebook and all the other different social medias. Uh, just follow that stuff, and you know you'll see it. I'll so, be posting it real soon. So CJ Edwards and the Funk Fellowship. And the Funk Fellowship. Mm -hmm. All right, wait, CJ and the Funk. All right, you guys, I'm gonna drop that link. I don't think that's the right one, but I'll find it. <clears throat> All right, Shorty C, it has been my pleasure having you on this show tonight. I love you Great. so much. I Thank you for having me, sis. Always, I can't wait to get down to Austin and give you a big squeeze. I need to come up there, but y'all not letting people in California right now. Right? I'll sneak you in, I'll sneak you in the back door. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys thank you so much i am actually going to pop back on here in an hour and uh, interview beebs from beebs and her money makers so i hope you guys can tune back in and join me for that i will talk to you soon shorty all my love to you peace we'll see you next time bye, bye.